So today I'm really excited to actually finally share with you my completed bedroom and it has taken a few weeks because I had so much more to do than maybe a normal person's house. I had to hang a new door, fit coving, then obviously prep and paint the walls as well. We had a carpet to fit and a radiator and a few plumbing pipes to hide. So yeah, it was a journey, but I'm glad we got here and it's the nicest bedroom I've ever had. So uh, yeah, if you wanna see how I did it, then keep on watching. So to give you a quick recap, ever since we moved in in 2014, this room used to be the living room and you'll find a whole playlist below in the description just to give you a catch up of all the things that we've done. But what I did was just empty the whole room, painted the whole room white, filled any areas, and then started thinking about my color scheme. But what really has motivated me to learn lots more jobs to get to a presentable stage is that I've actually been working with a Danish-owned global furniture retailer, Jusk, because they've got a brand new store opening on the 28th of July, which is in my hometown in Doncaster. So I'll tell you a bit more about that later. And they kindly gifted most of the furniture that you're gonna see in this video but I did buy a lot of things myself as well. And they offer pretty much everything for your home with great offers in a Scandinavian style. So it's been a very refreshing journey, but if you're not familiar with the style Huga, I personally think it's about creating cozy, warm, fuzzy feelings in your house. So I took some time off from DIY and spent an entire week creating a mood board. All I did was just copy and paste used items that I liked and place them in Microsoft Paint. But it was also an affordable way to fill the wall with paint without physically doing it. And I highly recommend this route because nothing was a surprise by the time everything was into place. So now we're up to last weekend and my whole delivery was ready to unbox. And we started off with two double wardrobes that we'd picked, but this is definitely a two man job. And it goes without saying, read the instructions. And it also advised us what tools to use as well. But as we later got into a rhythm, we found that it was useful to have two of everything so we could speed up the process. And the reason we started on these first is because we knew we'd need all the floor space. But here I'm just following the guide. And to me, flat pack furniture has always been like a really rewarding jigsaw puzzle. But definitely take your time. Mostly I think it is best to use hand tools and make sure things are hand tight because you don't want to over tighten them. So you can finally see the first wardrobe is taking shape. And again, a two man job to rest it up against the wall. And as for the doors, here I'm just screwing some metal plates to join them all together. But before we put those on, I thought it was best to secure it to the wall. So I'm just pre drilling a hole here before adding my mount bracket. But on the opposite side of the chimney breast, I had to fix it in different places because I knew there were an electric cable there. Another thing that I had to really consider while designing this layout was storage. So we decided to go for these extra wardrobe inserts as well. Another tip I'd recommend is to separate all the fittings you've got into groups. And I just love how these drawers were so easy, all in one piece with corners. And you could just fold them, slot the drawer base in and carry on as normal. Oh, and I forgot to say that we also picked majority white as well, just to go for a brighter look. And that feature wall was quite strong. So although we've got a lot of drawers, the white has really opened it up and made it look more spacious than what it was before. So the next morning I'm finishing off my own wardrobe and because we'd got the gist of the first one, I found this one so much quicker to do. So what are we building now? Ah, that's it. We're on the chest of drawers. I knew I didn't want all of my furniture to be white. I wanted something to break it up so it would be easier to tie in accessories later. So then onto my dressing table. I picked this one because it's a minimalist style that I've always wanted. And this one was the easiest one to build because the top was already made up. So while my fiance is watching the football, I tried to pretend I'd done it already, but it beat me to it. I'm halfway through already. No, we're already like this. <laughs> Then I had to start squaring them with the face of my new bedside drawers. Oh, and another tip that was recommended through the instructions was to always work on a rug or carpet so you don't break anything. But for this job in particular, I took it to my new dressing table because it was just moving about a bit too much. And while I'm fastening it on the screw plates to make it square, I pushed it against a flat piece of wood while I'm screwing it into place and then finished it off with the drawers. And now onto the last piece of furniture, the key part of a bedroom, the bed. Then I had to think practically, so I opted for this one with drawers either side and some shelves. And I'm also adding wheels to it so it's easy to pull out. And then we moved on to the headboard and we didn't realise it was the headboard. You've just got to go with the flow and trust the instructions. 
and then everything should fall into place. So this is what the bed looked like, but later I'll be adding the slats and the mattress. So now for the bit I've been really looking forward to, and that is my wall feature. And going back to part one of this series, I showed you how I created this circle with masking tape, a string, pencil, and a picture hook. And I designed this from two floating wall shelves. So right now I'm just holding it in the air to get a visual of where I want it. But I thought if I change my mind later on, don't worry, I could just fill the holes, paint them, and redo them. So these come with a metal mounting bracket and they only go one way and there's an arrow pointing up to show you. And once I knew where I wanted my shelf, using a small spirit level, I held it along the top of the bracket, made sure the spirit level was dead center and then penciled in where the screw holes were. So I'm now pre-drilling holes on those pencil markings and I'm using a four and a half mil masonry drill bit for this. And I'm also wearing some goggles for safety. Bear in mind, this is a combi drill and it's on a hammer drill setting. Then I added some roll plugs and then aligned the bracket up and fixed in my screws. And then fixed the shelf into place with two screws underneath. And then onto my next shelf, so I placed a couple of used accessories on here just to get an idea of the gap I wanted. And then carried on as normal. And I'm now putting the slats into place which do come separate with the bed. And once I've put my mattress on top, it was time to get the bedroom ready. This is the exciting part. And then onto our king size quilt cover. And this is when I started adding a few gray accents to the room. And I started off with this very soft faux fur throw. And then a few more decorative items. So you'll notice there's no TV in this bedroom. And this is something I've never come across. Curtains that come with web hem. So if your windows are much shorter, these are very easy to shorten with an iron or a steamer. I'm just sliding the hooks on and clipping them onto my track so I know how much I need to cut off. And then I'll just pin one end up to where I want it and then measure and pin into place until I get to the end. And to create a crease, I either iron or steam. And then to just double check they are the right length, I hang them back up just to see. And then I take them back down again, unpin the curtains because that crease is there, place the hem tape inside the fold and then go over it with a steamer or iron. And it should fuse the fabric together. Then using a very sharp pair of scissors, I'm now cutting as close as I can to that webbed hem and then hang that up and work on the next one. But something I had changed my mind on since doing the mood board was the space above the bed. So I picked up some more picture frames in my local branch and to hang them on my brick wall, all I used was some picture hooks, which has a little nail in it and I just hammered where I wanted it and then hung the picture. So since then, I've added a few more things like a pink cushion on the bed to tie in with the pink, a borderline basket so I could fill some space by adding one of my house plants for greenery and oxygen in the room and some pretty decorative pieces on my dressing table. So I'm one very happy bunny. So if you are local to Doncaster, then their new store opens Saturday the 28th of July at 9 a.m. and it's in the Danham Retail Park in York Road. And they've chosen Doncaster for their first Concept 3.0 store. And it's gonna have lots of rooms set out that are fully accessorized. And they've told me there's gonna be some free Danish breakfast for customers with prices up to 75% off. So I can't thank you, Yuski, enough for the opportunity because we certainly wouldn't have got around to doing it so soon and probably even wouldn't have given myself a kick up the backside to get the doors and various things done as well. So uh, yeah, I'll leave links to the things below that I have in the room and anything that I use to get here. Oh, and there's gonna be a blog post below as well of pretty pictures of all the surroundings that uh, I got a bit excited with my camera because it's never been so pretty. So anyway, hope you like this video and don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more and hopefully I'll see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.